On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, Siemens partners with LO3 to build a blockchain platform that will allow you to sell the energy you generate from your solar panels. Circle allows you to send Bitcoin directly from your regular bank account with zero fees. Just register a debit card and from then on, you can send Bitcoin to any address in a single step. Get $5 cash back when you make your first $25 transaction by using the link in the video description below. Hi there guys and welcome to the latest episode of the Cryptoverse, your regular dose of news and commentary on Bitcoin, cryptocurrencies and blockchains. I am your host, Chris Coney. So let's get into today's news. Today we turn once again to Bitcoin.com. Jamie Redman brings us this article that's entitled Siemens partners with LO3 building blockchain microgrids. So let's see what this has got to say for itself. The largest engineering corporation in Europe, Siemens AG, has recently announced an energy collaboration with fintech startup LO3 Energy to create blockchain microgrids. The blockchain protocol aims to enable energy trades facilitated by a distributed ledger platform. Now, LO3, that almost makes me want to say LOL. It also sounds like a kind of gas, you know, like CO2. But anyway, back in episode 147 of the Cryptoverse, I talked about how decentralizing the power grid was a key component to bring about a truly free world. So you can imagine my delight when I heard about this initiative from Siemens. So let's read more about this particular partnership. It says, LO3 will be supported by Siemens Digital Grid and Next47, which is a unit inside Siemens, to create a blockchain-based microgrid service in Brooklyn, New York. Quote, the constant evolution at the grid edge requires advanced control, automation, and data analytics technologies, enabling secure, stable, and reliable integration of decentralized energy systems, as well as supporting the establishment of new business models. Now, that was a quote from Ralph Christian, CEO of Siemens Energy Management Division. Now, here I spotted another pattern, which is the idea of innovation at the fringes. And what I mean by that is innovation from the edge of a system or even from outside the system completely. Now, in cryptocurrencies, that would be the unbanked looking at the fiat banking system and deciding to skip that completely and go straight to Bitcoin. And similarly, if you are in a remote location and we're talking about the power grid, if you're in a remote location that has like a weak link to the main power grid, well, there's an incentive to become self-sufficient or at the very least to have an option to switch from locally generated power to the main power grid as the need arises. And in this article, it talks about say if you've got adverse weather or whatever, right? Now, for someone living in a city, say with strong links to the main power grid, well, those incentives might not exist or they might not be as strong. But ironically, everyone benefits from decentralization because it makes the overall system more resilient. It's the same old thing we talk about in cryptocurrencies about centralization. Centralization is one point of attack, there's one point of failure. And if that centralized point fails, everyone gets cut off. And that's the same whether it's a Bitcoin exchange or whether it's a power station or whatever. So moving on then, it says the startup claims the technology will facilitate distributed ledger-based local energy trades between consumers in New York's Gowanus neighborhoods, Bowerham Hill, and Park Slope. Right, so this is only a pilot project to prove the concept. Ordinarily, excess energy generated from someone's solar panels would go to waste. So say if my batteries are fully charged and I'm still generating power, you know, I can't do anything with it, can I? But this system would allow me to sell that excess power to someone else locally who wants it. They wouldn't have to necessarily be local either. I could sell, send it further afield if I wanted to. So this is another aspect of what we call the sharing economy, you know, where the output from one person's system or the spare capacity of one person's asset can be put into someone else's system. In fact, if we switch over to LO3's website here, they actually break down the three projects that they're doing. So we've got the Brooklyn microgrid, which we just talked about, the transactive grid, and then my favorite one, which is this project Exergy. And it says here on the LO3 website, 
Project Exergy is a R&D, which is research and development, effort to turn computers into a primary source of heat. The LO3 concept model is a distributed computation and heating application platform that provides a thermal storage system as well as plug and play integration with a building's existing heating, ventilation and air conditioning system. Now, you can tell, I can tell straight away that some engineer wrote that, right? Because it's very technical and dry. But I like the idea. In fact, when I first read this, I thought about someone with a bunch of mining rigs in their garage and then selling all of that heat to one of their neighbors or a collection of their neighbors. I mean, that's energy that they would otherwise going to waste. So it's kind of like energy recycling. Now, if you're interested in this stuff, LO3 has a separate website for each of these three projects. If you're into building computers and overclocking, for example, the Project Exergy website has a couple of build logs here where they've showed fancy things that they've fitted to computer cases to experiment with heat capture. They call one of them Henry and one of them Thermal Pig. So check those out. The second project, which is the Transactive Grid, it has a web page, but there's nothing on it. And then the third one is the Brooklyn Microgrid site. The favorite thing about this site for me is that it has a map showing a whole bunch of locations where solar and wind power is already being generated. And better yet, further up here, we have a bunch of profile videos featuring people both generating the power, what they call either commercial producers or prosumers, and then the people who are consuming that power. The bottom line for me here is that this microgeneration stuff is right up there as one of my favorite topics. So if you share a love for this stuff, then please let me know in the comments below. So thanks for joining me today, guys. If you liked this episode, hit the like button. If you disliked it, hit the dislike button. Please leave me a comment below with some feedback and get subscribed. And please support the Cryptoverse and boost cryptocurrency adoption by going to cryptoversity.com forward slash podcast and becoming a patron. From as little as $10 a month, you can secure Cryptoversity's future, get unlimited access to all Cryptoversity courses, and access a private patrons-only chat group where you get direct access to me. But that's all for today, guys. I will be back tomorrow with another episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney, saying bye for now.